So what's the deal with these nucleic acids? Why do we always talk about them in biology? And why are they so important to genetics? Well, in this video, we're going to start to look at the function and structure of nucleic acids, specifically with respect to their information storing capacity. We'll look at the basic structure of their sugars and of their nitrogenous bases, as well as talking about Chargaff's rules for base bearing. DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid, and RNA, or ribonucleic acid, are the two nucleic acids that store genetic information in your cells. They store the genetic code in your cell through their molecular structures, which we will look at now. The general structure of a nucleic acid is a five-membered ribosugar ring with a five-prime phosphate group. That means a phosphate group on the uh, five-prime carbon, a three-prime hydroxyl group, and the primary difference between DNA and RNA lies in the two-prime carbon, which in the case of DNA has a hydrogen and an RNA has a hydroxyl group. And the presence of a hydroxyl group is the reason why we use DNA over RNA for long-term storage. Because as you'll learn in biochemistry, a hydroxyl group of the two prime group makes this susceptible to base catalyzed hydrolysis, meaning that RNA is less stable in the cell and DNA is more stable. So it can encode and store information for a longer period of time. DNA and RNA's unique capacity to store information come from their structures and the structures of their bases. The bases are organized into two different types. You have purines with two rings and pyrimidines with a single ring. The pyrimidines are uracil, thymine, and cytosine. Uracil is special in that it's only present in RNA, and thymine is only present in DNA. Adenine and guanine are the two types of purines. Adenine always will base pair to thymine, or in a double-stranded section of RNA, it will bond to uracil. Guanine will always bind to cytosine. The binding properties of DNA and RNA in respect to their base pairing was discovered by Chargaff. Chargaff's rule states that the proportion of adenine is equal to thymine and that guanine is equal to cytosine, meaning that if you added up the amounts of adenine and thymine, as in the percentages, and the amounts of guanine and cytosine, they would add up to 100. That means that if the percentage of thymine in a cell is 15%, then also the percentage of adenine is 15%. And so this adds up to 30%. 100 minus 30 is 70, meaning that per the percentage of G, guanine, is 35%. And cytosine, or C, is also 35%. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true no matter what genetics class you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Remember, if you are currently enrolled as a Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services. Our tutoring center is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson Building. You will find all the details you need to know about these services on our website, www.baylor.edu. tutoring You may schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online through Navigate or just drop in during our open business hours. For more information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.